How do you start backing yourself, Grant? If you're someone that's looking to create some confidence in what you're doing and really get behind your ideas and making transitions or starting that business or changing that business or whatever it is, where do you go? Because it's not like we're immune to this. Like it still pops up for me today. Even, do you know what really pops up for me today? Investing. Right, it really does yeah. because like some of the moves I'm looking to make today are much bigger than the ones I've done in the past. I'm looking at the ideas of taking on like millions in debt and it's like why not? I see an investment, there's an extra zero on it. I know it's a good investment based on the other things I've done, but that extra zero, I'm not backing myself, Grant. Mm. Even, even to that point to myself, like I'm looking at acquiring quite a few properties this year. And like everything in the news is saying not to. <laughs> and I'm sitting here acquiring properties going, and I'm just sitting there going, why am I saying yes when every investor that I appreciate is like, maybe don't? <laughs> and I'm so like, let's go there. How did, how did you cultivate it? How did you enable backing yourself? That's a particularly good one because we would only have to flick on the news right now. And I'm sure someone would be out, or YouTube or whatever it is, yep. there'd be someone out there basically saying this is a bad idea, yet you're still backing yourself. There's 90% of them out there saying it's a bad idea. Um, yeah, so to use, that, to use those examples, the best way is for me to look back at when I've been most successful. So you, to use the SEO example, you reference the point like, well, how many other clients are successful slash have been successful based on what I've been doing? And it was a higher percentage than 50, which means, well, okay, you're actually pretty good at the thing that you're trying to sell, which means that you're not an imposter. You're actually good at it. From an investing side of uh, side of view, um, I bring that down to my knowledge of how I invest, my interpretation of the environment, and that I know I cannot outsource accountability on it. Where if I just try and do what everyone else in the market does, I'm going to get average returns and I'm not trying to do what everybody else, else does, which means there's only one other thing that I can do, which is back myself. It's either follow the crowd or back yourself. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to follow the crowd, which means that the better outcome for me was backing myself because I've got no other choice. And so it, it's interestingly enough, like I have put so much pressure on myself to not follow a crowd or if I ever see myself following consensus, second question, why? And so business and investing is slightly different on that way where I've actually built it into my being to dive on the hand grenade in business of like, why are you avoiding sales? Jump on that hand grenade and figure it out. In investing, it's like, well, why aren't you investing? Jump on a hand grenade, figure it out and actually try and understand. And so it's been this ability to look for the things when I'm like prioritize, uh, deprioritizing what should I should be prioritizing or even holding back on doing the things that I know I need to do. So investing, for example, just not investing for a period of time. So why? I do find it fascinating that in the perspective, you and I have been doing business for, wow, geez, over 10 years now, I would think. Way, way too long. It's much easier to back yourself in an area where you have extensive experience. That yeah. experience creates confidence where you will back moves more heavily. When we've both gone into investing, which we haven't been in as long as we have been in business, and there's big amounts of money involved and debt. It's funny that that backing yourself in that arena can be quite different. And I think it highlights some really important things here. And I'll, I'd love to go through them if we can. I think it's a cool idea. So number one, I think one of the best ways you can actually back yourself is improving your knowledge in an area because it creates more certainty. So one of the things I've actually noticed in you that I don't know if you've noticed in yourself you went to a property event last week. You've been reading more property books, I've noticed, because a lot of our conversations have been flowing around on that. I've really watched you in this time when you've been doing your accumulator create certainty by leaning on knowledge and resources so that you can feel more confident in backing this idea of doing the accumulator here. Totally. Second one is I notice your conversations with myself and then even in some of our dealings with like Goose or Aaron or other people we're in is like you're leaning in on other people that uh, have that experience to create more certainty for yourself as well. So I think like two really like pillar points when you are looking to make a move is that if you can increase your knowledge in an area or lean into people that have results in an area, creating more certainty reduces the risk in a move and then enables confidence so you can back yourself more heavily. And hopefully I have explained that reasonably well. And concur. 
Because though, if you apply those two points back across the SEO company, to use that as an example, uh, first one is, well, I was trying to solve the uh, immediate problem or challenge that I had for a client because it was showing up everywhere else. And obviously, I, I mentally, I thought I couldn't solve it. I'm sure I could have, which means that that was the first thing I was doing was trying to figure out how to solve it. But if I couldn't, I'd just move into your step number two, which is, or surround yourself, like find the other people that have already had the problem <laughs> and get them to help you solve the problem. Well, I do wonder if we went back in time and let's say instead of starting e-commerce stores in your example, you actually joined an SEO mastermind, got an SEO mentor, started reading more on SEO and solved that problem or got perspective to solve that problem, would it have changed the direction? Maybe you That's would have backed yourself on building a bigger SEO company rather than uh, gone into the direction of e-commerce. So and I do one of the same thing about ads myself. Yeah. It was so funny at the time. I, I know why it didn't. It was because I was known as the SEO guy. <laughs> and so I didn't want other people to think that I didn't know how to do SEO. By like saying, hey, I can't solve this thing. So I'm like, I was always the guy with the answers. And so again, that was just another example of me not backing myself by the way. <laughs> but again, like that was me just shying away from the things that I needed to do instead of backing myself. Hey fellow business owner, if this topic and value packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into creating wealth inside and outside your business, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.